Okay, in this video, we're going to install the MySQL Workbench. So if we go to mysql.com, just show you how to get back here. We go to Downloads GA. Um, then right here is the MySQL or MySQL Workbench. And the first thing I want to point out is depending on if you're using Windows, um, there may be some prerequisites. So if I click on this, you can see you're going to need these two files. And you'll know if you need them or not. Um, when you download this file right here, the Windows ins installer for the workbench, when you download this, you're going to know whether you need them or not because it'll start the installer and it'll fail. And it will tell you that you need the prerequisites. So in our video, um, we have already have those downloaded. You can see I downloaded the prerequisites and I have them installed for the sake of time. Now we're going to go ahead and install the workbench. So we'll select Run. Next, I'm going to I'm going to select the default directory. That's fine. Tell it to do a complete install, and it'll start. And depending on depending on the language and the environment you're using, um, you may or may not use this. I like to use it because, regardless of the programming language or the GUI tool that I'm using. Um, this is consistent, and so I can use it, I can d develop my database, I can make changes to it, and if I decide to do use the database for a different type of programming language, I already have the UI that I'm familiar with, I don't have to re relearn something. Um, in addition, I can use this to manage the local database that we set up in the last video, and I can use it to manage the databases on Let's say if I'm doing web development and I'm paying somebody to host those uh, the website for me, then uh, in most cases I can use this to, to manage those remote databases as well. So just like it's finished, let's see if it comes up on its own. No. All right, so let's go to no, here. It is right here. Taking a second. But so anyway, it's a good consistent tool that you can use. Cross-platform, you can install it on Windows, Mac, uh, Linux, you name it. And again, it can manage our local database or our remote one. And so once I have it set up here, um, we can see that we have a local instance which is running on this machine, uh, which is our local host, and it has a default port, and the user that installs with is root. So if I double click this. All right, so it's asking me for a password. In the last video, we installed the database, and we gave it the password of password. Uh, that's fine for your local ma local machine. We'll we'll talk about security and everything else later on. But you can see that uh, MySQL is installed. It came with a default database, and we can see um, uh, basically there's just a test sentence there. So in the next video, we'll get started with creating databases and adding uh, tables and fields and keys and all the other things that you expect. And again, we're going to use this to store the data when we have one or more people accessing the data or for using a, a website. So take care and we'll see you in the next video.